I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. You've got your reef tank set up, it's cycled, you've picked your corals, you've acclimated your corals, you dipped your corals, now it's time to put them in your tank. But where do you put them in your tank? Well, variety is the spice of life and different corals have different needs. Therefore, where you place your coral is mostly dependent on what type of coral it is. As a general rule, SPS like more flow, more light, and go up higher in your tank. LPS and soft corals like less flow and less light, so they go lower down. And some corals like to be placed in the sand bed. Keep in mind, directly under your light on the sand bed is likely a higher light area than off to the side of your light up high. The further from directly below the light source you are, the less light there is. The same rule applies to flow as directly in front of your power head is the highest flow. Don't overlook the incoming flow to the power head though, as close to your power head but off to the side is also a high flow area. Flow smashing together from different power heads is also a high flow area. This coral is down low on the budget soft coral tank and you think it would be in a low flow area. Due to the collision of the flow of the two power heads, it's actually in a medium flow area. The guideline that SPS corals go up high and softies and LPS corals go down low, it's just that. It's just a guideline. It's a general rule of thumb. Before you place that coral in your tank, do some research on the specific needs of that coral. Because some SPS corals actually like higher light and some like lower light and some LPS corals like higher light and higher flow. So get specific on that coral that you're placing in your tank. Now once you know where you're going to place it in your tank, what do you do with that strange thing that corals are sometimes attached to? That strange looking thing is called a frag plug and a question I get a lot is, should you remove the coral from the plug? The answer depends partly on if you find coral plugs ugly and partly if the coral is encrusted on the plug. If you don't like the looks of frag plugs in your tank, keep in mind as your corals grow, they'll overgrow and hide that frag plug. If you still want to remove the coral from the plug, bone cutters are used for hard corals and for soft corals, surgical scissors or a razor blade are used. For hard corals, grab your bone cutters and nip as close to the frag plug as you can get. Soft pressure on the bone cutters is usually enough to remove the coral from the plug. Pro tip, some soft corals can slime over when they are cut, which makes gluing them onto the rocks out of the question. Leathers and mushrooms all slime when cut, so avoid removing these from plugs if they're already attached. Zoas don't slime and can easily be removed from frag plugs and glued in place. One time I don't remove corals from frag plugs is when the coral has encrusted the plug. Now this guy here, you can see how he's overgrown the plug. We call that encrusting. This isn't one that I would want to cut off. I want the coral to be on the plug because it's already laid down as solid base for itself. I don't have any concerns about this part breaking off because I've got the coral that's encrusted over the plug down here on the bottom. Here's a soft coral that is fully attached to the plug and not one that I would remove. I've been talking about gluing corals to rocks and that's not a mistake. You're actually going to glue the corals onto the rocks in your tank with super glue. But there's a catch. You don't want just any super glue. You want gel type super glue with the ingredient cyanoacrylate and the glue bottle will say cyanoacrylate light on the label. The gel type super glue with the cyanoacrylate cures slower than regular super glue. That means you've got time to apply glue to the coral skeleton or to that frag plug and then glue it onto the rocks in your tank before it sets up. So you want super glue, but you want the gel type super glue with cyanoacrylate. When it's time to place coral in my tank, I first think about placement in terms of flow and lighting needs. Then I look for crevices where the coral will stay put on its own. This coral is staying in place without glue and I can't knock it off easily, so I'll leave it in place without the help of glue. If you want to be more certain of its placement, a generous amount of gel super glue will keep the frag plug or the coral skeleton in place. This soft coral keeps falling off the rocks, so it needs some glue. Apply glue to the coral, place it on your rocks, and then hold it in place for about 30 seconds to allow the glue to bond to the rock. Then release and make sure that it stays put. Coral placement is part science and a lot of art. While one place may seem perfect in terms of lighting and flow for that coral, your coral may decide it's not happy there. And if you look at the coral and you can tell that it's not happy by following the steps that I outlined in the Corals Gone Bad video, it's time to move that coral. 
I'm not afraid to move a coral if it's not happy, but when I do move it and I put it somewhere new, I leave it there for at least a week. It may take some time to get used to its new surroundings, and if it's doing poorly, then it's got to recover and then start doing better before you're likely going to see any big changes in the coral. So when you move it, move it, make a choice about moving it and be decisive about it, but then leave it there for a week and then see how it does. I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.